All right, you beautiful humans, we are back for another one here on the more boring yet necessary pieces to your workflow, which is file management, going deeper into archiving and specifically addressing backing up your data on a budget. And yes, we're gonna be focusing on the budget. I'm gonna be talking about the specifics of the hardware, some of the pros and cons of this particular hardware. And yes, I do have, of course, as you know, I've done a little testing and I'll share that data with you. Now, of course, for those of you that have been around the channel, you know that I've done several videos on working off of SSD drives, especially when you need to expand that storage of your current internal system and getting very similar read and write speeds that you would on that built-in system drive. And of course, I've had several of you reach out about what it is that you do when your SSD that you're, you're working on, like when you're working off of that and it starts to fill up and you run out of space, which in my line of work, this definitely happens quite often. I have several more of these in my particular rotation. And of course, SSDs can certainly be a backup solution, but I'd actually like to discuss with you what I think is a better option for archiving on a lean budget. But I do want you to keep in mind, however, that I do recommend redundancy, and I personally do use a network attached storage device, a NAS, uh, for all of my archives, which we'll, we'll expand on this in another video but it's just gonna be that your budget is gonna go quickly north. But for today, uh, the solution that I have for you is featuring the Western Digital Easy Store desktop setup, and this is housing a 14 terabyte hard disk drive. So there's a single drive in here. Now, of course, the 14 terabyte might be overkill for many of you, although if you're in my line of work, you will start to see that these things start filling up quite quickly. But one of the things that I really like about them is that they are reasonably priced per terabyte. And I will say that these drives are always going on sale. I've got quite a few. Now, of course, I've talked a lot about speed in my previous videos when reviewing and testing these SSDs, but this is a spinning drive that's, that's set for 5,400 RPMs. And you know, if you want to nerd out a little bit on these particular uh, enclosures and what drive is in here, these are typically the white drive. But apparently, per rumors, and if you go down some rabbit holes, these were originally designed for 7200 RPMs and didn't pass that quality control. So they're binned at 5400 RPMs. I mean, take that as you will, but just a little investigative work over the years but it is USB uh, 3.0. So that throughput, it's not going to be anything to you know get excited about. But of course, there are videos out there and I agree that, that there are people that are working off of these drives. However, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for anything intensive such as video editing or anything like gaming because these drives are significantly slower and not only in synthetic benchmarks, but really real, real world use. And of course, even though I'm saying that I wouldn't think it would be the most efficient use of that drive and you working off of it, I actually got some surprising results in my testing that I'll share with you. Now, the additional caveat here is that I'd like to mention that although these hard drives typically do have a three to five year lifespan on average based on testing and manufacturing and some of the, the Western digital drives that I have, the red drives, which are NAS specific, um, they're still going strong at seven years. And I even have some of the white Western digital drives in there. And of course I can link up some options um, for you or at least some resources just so that you kind of know about uh, the particular drives and how they're used. But the fact that you only have a single drive in this enclosure that's not mirrored to anything else, this could still be a risk for losing your information. And that does make me a little bit nervous. So I'm just putting that out there. This is actually where I would recommend two solutions that can help you gain a little bit more peace of mind. First, you can actually set up what's called a smart utility, and this stands for self-monitoring analysis and reporting technology system. It just rolls right off the tongue, I know. But there are some utilities from Western Digital that are built in that you can install um, for Mac OS and Windows when you first get the drive if you want, but you can also use something like Drive DX, which is what I use to run these utilities, just to see if anything is like early indicators of any drive failures, any risks that that, that utility is seeing. And the one thing that I do like about Drive DX is that, so 
there, there's a free trial, but also, you know, you, you pay for it. But I think it's peace of mind because this is something that you can use across all of your drives, not just the particular Western Digital setup. Although again, you can certainly use the Western Digital setup that comes with it. But I, I just, I like Drive DX, not sponsored or in any way. It's just something that I use. But second, I do think that duplicating your backup of the drive is also very important. And that data, whether it's the entire drive itself or some of that data, by using something like Backblaze, Dropbox, Google Drive, um, or what I actually use on even my NAS, like I have a cloud backup for that and I use Amazon service because Amazon's particular service is significantly cheaper per terabyte because it's often targeted to those that aren't really looking to access that data as often. And so that's why it might actually be cheaper. I'll link up some of those options, but to have that redundancy, since there's only one drive in the enclosure, just in case there's a complete failure, which I hope would never happen to any of you. And of course, a typical workflow would either be you working on your project, set of projects, or working with large files, either on your internal drive or an SSD. And these drives start to fill up. And I get asked about this all the time about what to do when this happens. So when you're looking to free up that space and do like a quick solution, you think like, all right, well, I'll just drag that folder or all these files from the SSD over to the archive. And that's fine in theory, but I would actually double check to make sure that everything in that folder transferred over because there might be some files that might ha not have properly transferred. And so what I recommend, and there are utilities built again within the Western Digital um, drive or that you can download from Western Digital, I'll link it up, but I actually use a utility for automation and backup that's a little bit more fluid and for Mac OS, Chronosync. I will also put a resource for Windows down there as well in the description, but this is actually where you can set that up, schedule it and mirror the, the SSD if you want. Everything on this could be transferred over there and synced up left and right or both sides or just transferring it because you wanna clean this off. So you, you wanna just reformat it, get everything off. And so then everything syncs or rather is transferred by the app. You can see it all happening. You can test just to make sure that your files and folders are all there. But again, it can set it up so that you can have that happen at times of the day when you're not really working on the drives. All right, and it wouldn't be my video here if it wasn't for a little bit of testing. So let's get the pencil, the iPad, because I've got some info that we can dig into here. Now, let's actually get into what I tested first, and that was the transfer of a, a large folder or a lot of files, 124 gigabytes to be specific here, moving it from an NVMe very fast SSD to the easy store, the spinning drive, that 124 gig folder took 10 minutes and nine seconds. Now, just testing the NVMe over to a Gen 2 SanDisk, a USB-C 3.2, much faster, two SSDs, that same folder, two minutes and 11 seconds. So if you're really relying on a lot of data transfer that you need access to quickly, and that's happening day in and day out, maybe the spinning drive is not the way to go. Although again, for deep archiving, I still think it's it's a great option. Now, looking at some of the benchmark tests here, Blackmagic was not really that impressive at about 192 and 190 for read and writes respectively. Now, using Diskmark, because I actually like that one, it gives a little bit more data, 201 on the read and 199 on the write with some additional values that I'll pop up here in the screenshot. Now the NVMe, the disk mark, just I've, I've tested it before, 2869 on the read and 1031 on the write. And of course you might be at, why is such a deep drop? I did this in my last video, I talked about the, the retimer and the Thunderbolt 3 controller in the M1 Max. You can head over there. It's, it's a bit of a hang up on the hardware, I believe. However, for real world like workflow, I mean, it, it hasn't slowed me down. You can check out the video just to see what I'm talking about. And of course, I always go to gaming because many of you have asked about gaming on an external drive. And so I did play Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is not optimized for M1, but I did play it. And let's keep in mind here, CPU is doing the lifting, GPU is definitely doing the lifting here, but it's a matter of calling up that data. So again, it's a spinning drive that, you know, the game is trying to access that information. 
you're going to see some lag and chop there. So, and I've done other videos where I've gamed on an external drive. I'll link those up as well on the SSD specifically. So on a spinning drive, it's possible. And of course, for those of you that might have a question about console gaming, I will say that my son uses this particular enclosure, this exact enclosure um, for his PlayStation 4, so PS4, thanks to Call of Duty, that you need all of that space for all of the updates, and it, it's it's done fine. So as far as PlayStation handling that data, it, it's doing well. He hasn't really talked about any lag, any issues, or anything concerning. So just wanted to kind of put that out there. And of course, something else that I always go to is the 4K timeline here. So I was able to scrub through a timeline that was on the Easy Store, not really dropping any frames. The analysis and render stuff that was happening took a little bit longer, but then removing all of the analysis, all of the render, and then exporting a 4K timeline into a compressed H.264, which is really intensive because it's compressing that down for YouTube. And that actually took 31 minutes and 18 seconds on the Easy Store. But surprising here, on the NVMe, on the faster drive, it took 23 minutes and 12 seconds. So about an eight minute difference. And some of you might be like, well, eight minutes, that's nothing. However, what I will say is that for those of you that have time sensitive issue, you know, like things that you're trying to get done in a certain amount of time, you're doing it day in and day out, that time can start to add up. Not to mention that this is an eight bit timeline that I was able to work with, scrub through, it was fine, the CPU and the GPU are doing the heavy lifting, but again, you could have some freeze up, some beach balling and having some issues scrubbing through, but I will I'll just share with you in this particular timeline, I didn't have any issues. So something to think about, I just personally wouldn't recommend it. Your mileage may vary though. So to reiterate, you can work off of these drives, but do keep those expectations in check because while some of the programs and the tasks may only be able to read and write at a certain speed, other programs may get bottlenecks by the fact that it's looking for more throughput from the drive itself. Anyway, I just wanted to answer some of your questions that you've had over the last several months, and I will be here in the comment section as I always am on YouTube or over on Twitter, the two very best places to find me, here or Twitter. Those are the two places. And of course, I'll have additional content on my NAS setup and some of that walkthrough, so stay tuned for that. And even this microphone, I didn't mention it earlier, but I'm doing a review on it, seeing what I think of it. So I will, you know, follow up with that as well. But in the meantime, you go out there and do those things that matter. Keep rocking those faces and being a good human. I really appreciate your time and attention on this one, and I'll catch you right back here on the next one.